point on our premises, as usually. Uh, we've met, met here to, to talk to you for uh, our pilot project and to answer all your questions regarding the project. And the hosts of today's meetings are Mr. Marek Bostuk, President and CEO of the company, and Mr. Darius Marek, Vice President for, for Development of the company, and uh, Mrs. Magdalena Bartosz, Managing Director and CFO of the company. Uh, my name is Przemysław Wasilewski, I'm Head of IR. Uh, because we, we, before we start, as usually, a few words about technicalities uh, of the meeting. We are sitting here in Warsaw in front of a group of domestic uh, um, analysts and investors, but the whole event is uh, webcasted via internet worldwide. Um, after a short presentation of ours, you will have opportunity to ask questions. Uh, if you sit here, that's pretty straightforward. You raise your hand, ask a question, then we answer. Uh, if you uh, watch this uh, in front of your computer, please send us an email uh, using a special form on the transmission uh, page. Then the, your question will be read out and possibly answered. So, so after this short introduction, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Warm welcome at our headquarters. Of course, the same warm welcome to those who uh, watch us through the web video streaming. Uh, as promised in one of our latest uh, public release, today we would like to give you uh, uh, some details on the rationale why we continue the project uh, Opole 2, the project that is to build two uh, thermal power units, uh, each of nine and 900 megawatts of uh, installed capacity. Uh, we decided to divide our presentation into two uh, uh, sections. The first one that belongs to me. Uh, I will give you uh, the observations of ours on the situation on the, on the uh, European business environment that we live and as well as uh, the situation on the or development on the Polish, Polish market. And the second part that belongs to uh, President Marzec. Uh, will be concentrated on uh, uh, macroeconomic fundamentals of this concrete project. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that there is no doubt, or at least I feel there is a common sense on, on the European level that the current model of energy market is subject to inevitable transformation. Why? Because uh, mm, it does not generate enough adequate investment incentives. As you know, this is, uh, the, the model is uh, based on assumptions on so-called uh, energy-only uh, trading. So the price within such a model is determined on the basis of, of the variable costs of the marginal power plant. And on such a market, there is a lack of remuneration of the capacity. Uh, of course, in theory, such a market model, energy-only market, could perform, probably, but uh, so far it was not allowed to perform according to its assumptions because of the set of uh, uh, public interventions. One of them is uh, subsidization of the renewables, so heavily subsidized across the Europe renewables, reduce the use of uh, conventional power plants, which is obvious. Uh, but uh, still the, the capacity of the conventional power plants is necessary uh, from the point of view of the uh, security of the supply. So volatility of, of energy prices causes difficulties in the long-term planning. That's why most of the countries, uh, if not all, think or some of them already started to the action to seek for more stable regulatory environment that could encourage investors to invest in the modern generation units. Of course, we still concentrate on the ma maintaining, we, I mean European society, just the regulators, the states, they concentrate on maintaining the competitiveness of the power market. Um, but generally, we seek for two types of the uh, let's say, new mechanisms stimulating uh, investments into a generation. The first one 
how to stimulate to build a new generation units, the second one, how to allow to stay online the existing units. Okay. On the chart behind me, it's nice slide if I lay. Okay. On the chart you, behind me, you may see that, generally speaking, uh, there are countries today that already have done something about the capacity remuneration mechanisms. However, the solutions undertaken by the member states are not consistent, are not, are, sorry, are not the same, but still are consistent in a way of achieving the targeted goal. And of course, there is a set of the countries that are planning to introduce such a type of mechanisms. Of course, my intention is not to, to, to present you the, 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 this in the given type of the possible solutions. However, I'm ready to answer questions if anybody is interested in. But the fact is that, of course, all those solutions target at, a, we believe, significant decrease of the risks of conventional generation. Next slide, please. At the same time, support scheme for the renewables is being changed, is being rationalized. The chart presents you, the, let's say, the set of the countries where it, even the subsidies were stopped for some type or, or, or all technologies. I may mention Spain, Portugal, Greece, or uh, Czech Republic, for example where the uh, Czech government has decided to uh, cut the support for the wind, biomass, and photovoltaics over 30 kilowatt of installed capacity. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we see that uh, ambitious goals at the European level in terms of the CO2 emission reductions are kept, which means that uh, mm, there is a more room on the market, we believe, for uh, more efficient generation units. So we may, we may, on the basis of that, build uh, our competitive advantage on, uh, on the new, uh, more efficient generation units uh, against the old one, less efficient. So summarizing generally, the ongoing market changes uh, alter the perception of investments in conventional sources. This is our belief. So introduction of the capacity me mechanism should lead to a higher cash flow for conventional pipelines. Uh, changes of a renewable su support scheme with the optimization criterion, which is lower costs, the same effect, should lead for lower exposure on risk, on low capacity utilization. In other words, we believe that it should be uh, more room on the market for conventional power. And simultaneously, the changes in the CO2 system, which is still really to be ambitious, uh, uh, will, will, give, uh, will bring about long-term competitive advantage of, of highly efficient generation units. Uh, in terms of a domestic backyard, if I may say so, uh, I'd like to draw your attention to at least two facts. Uh, so first, capacity mechanism has appeared on the Polish market. Uh, firstly, so last year, the Polish TSO has introduced, after the approval of the regulatory authority, uh, the, the mechanism of so-called interventional reserve uh, that is dedicated to the existing uh, units, the old ones, but uh, aims at, let's say, lengthening their uh, life, their exploitation in terms of the maintaining the, the required level of, uh, of the reserve capacity from the point of view of the TSO. The second one, more important, we believe, this is so-called operational reserve mechanism, uh, which is to ensure the profitability of keeping the existing units online. Of course, this mechanism is dedicated to all centrally dispatched thermal units, which, as you know, we have in our portfolio. 
This, this was the, the first fact. The second one is uh, about the renewables, and as in the other member states of the EU, also Poland reshapes uh, the model of the support scheme for the renewables. And uh, as in the other countries, the effect, the estimated for support, assumed effect is, let's say, the, the less significant influence of the renewable unions on the married order. So again, more room for those who produce the power, who deliver the power to the system on uh, conventional unions. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Dariusz Marzic, Vice President of the Management Board, responsible for development. I would like to guide you through the set of assumptions we made once we uh, assess and analyze uh, the Opole project. Recently, in December and beginning of January, uh, having in mind the recent changes and recent developments related to the regulatory environment of the project and other important assumptions which leads and creates the final conclusion whether to continue or reassess a continuation of the project. So in terms of the assumptions, I would like to underline that first of all we prefer to be on the safe side. So we decided to be conservative in the assumptions and we decided not to make very optimistic uh, very optimistic assumptions in the in the in the in the critical uh, elements of the model to be on the safe side and to 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 to, to have a comfort that the situation can be only better uh, in future uh, that's the that's the first assumption we made the second one in terms of approach was that we did not include and we did not project in our in our model any opole dedicated support mechanism so we assume that Opole units will operate on the competitive market, which will, which will consist the mechanisms which are already there, especially operational uh, reserve, uh, oper operational reserve system, which was introduced on, on January. We just assume that this mechanism would, will work as it was planned, and it will achieve the goals which is designed for, and that was the uh, that was the major assumption. So uh, I think it's quite important to underline there is no any Opole dedicated non-existing support mechanism which we let's say shape which shaped our uh, uh, analysis and, and and then gets us to the to the uh, conclusion. So talking about hardcore prices, we believe that they will be stable till 2016 and following, in following years we assume that the coal prices uh, will follow the projections of International Energy uh, Agency. Uh, agency. Uh, this means that the compound annual growth rate for the coal in the years 2016-2030 annually uh, will be around 1.5%. Uh, it's worth to underline that our supply contract in Opole uh, balanced the risks of the coal, hard coal market prices, balanced the risk of, of, of those prices between supplier and, 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 and our unit. The second uh, important assumption is the climate policy and the potential impact it may have on our project. Basically, uh, we took the, the recent, the most recent document issued by the uh, European Commission, which is impact assessment date, dated uh, October 2013, where assumptions are 10 euro per ton in 2020, 35 euro per ton in 2035. Uh, as Mr. Woszczyk already mentioned, we also assume the rationalization of the, of the renewable support system, which we believe should stabilize on the level of around 19-20% 20, 20 in the years 2020-2030. In terms of the, of the demand for energy, we believe that the Polish economy, the, 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 let's say, uh, the worst uh, years uh, are behind us, so we believe that in uh, uh, the um, uh, demand for the energy would be more dynamic in the in the coming years. So uh, we believe that 
till year 2018, uh, the annual growth of this demand would be around 1.5%. 5% after 2018 will stabilize below 1% uh, per year. For your reference and information, in the years 2005-2013, uh, this growth, uh, yearly, uh, computed yearly growth was about 1%. In terms of the computed annual growth rate for the electricity, market electricity prices, uh, we assume that in the years 2016-2030, this computed growth would be around 4.7% per year. And that's mainly driven uh, by the uh, changes of the, of the coal prices and, and, and emission uh, uh, allowances prices, CO2 prices. And another conservative assumption uh, we made, quite conservative, I believe, assumption we made is that the level of prices for electricity uh, from year 2012 uh, the market will reach after year 2020, which is quite, I believe, quite, quite conservative. That's the, the major uh, cost inputs to the model, the regulatory, regulatory assumptions and uh, project uh, environment assumptions, uh, capacity mechanism, they will exist as they exist now, and they will uh, work as, it, uh, as they should work and as it designed. Uh, uh, the renewables support system will be rationalized and will stabilize on the level of 19% in year 2020. And of course, it's worth to mention that, of course, as you perfectly know, there is new renewable support system in, uh, in the discussion in uh, authorities in, in the Polish government and, and uh, subsequently uh, in Polish parliament. And of course, especially in terms of our long-term pipeline or the further pipeline in our renewable uh, renewable uh, portfolio, we will analyze those projects based on the new regulation or introduced uh, regulation, uh, which we believe uh, will happen in the foreseeable uh, future. And we also assume that the future development of our cogeneration segment will depend on the on the support and, and, the, and the final shape of the support system uh, for this segment is quite difficult now to make uh, long-term projections in that, uh, in that respect, uh, having in mind that the regulation system is currently under, under discussion. So having in mind all of those assumptions, having in mind all of these uh, elements, uh, we came to the conclusion that uh, Opole, that Opole project has a rate of return which is over the expected uh, PG group uh, WAC level, which uh, leads us to the conclusion that there is no any, there is only a, a, any major factors and risk elements which should lead us to the conclusion that we should stop this project. In the next, in the next slide, you can see some summary of the, let's say, development of the project, formal development of the project within our group. As you can see, as you can see the project was initiated in, uh, in June 2009, and the decision of the issuing of the note to proceed for the, for the construction companies was decided on the December 6, 2013. And so we believe that uh, this initiation of the construction work uh, will happen 1st February this year. We expect that the first unit, number five, will be commissioned in uh, beginning of third quarter 2018, the next unit, first quarter 2019. So that's, that's the contractual, uh, contractual uh, obligations of our uh, contractors. In summary, uh, we believe that the PG competitive advantage should be built on the assumption that we are operating highly efficient uh, units and those units are operated on the, based on the domestic fuels and uh, uh, domestic uh, resources. This project should increase competitiveness of, of PG, especially on a generation uh, market. This state of art conventional unit perfectly fit our fleet uh, and uh, uh, that's how we believe uh, the um, generation leader on this market should 
That's the kind of fleet and kind of units the uh, the, uh, the generation leader should should operate. We also believe that due to the effect of scale, the fixed cost of uh, Opole. Uh, power plants will be divided through much bigger volume of electricity produced, which will make Opole, Opole plant one of the most efficient, uh, from the financial point of view, plants in, in, in Polish uh, electricity uh, sector. We are also quite satisfied that we succeed to, to negotiate the, the, the coal supply contract uh, in the way and on the terms which are balancing the risks the risk between supplier and, and client. Uh, the, the last slide shows you some... Next, please. The next, uh, last slide shows you some technical, uh, technical data related to this, to this unit. Most probably you know them already, but that's proof that this unit is the highly efficient, uh, environmentally friendly, and that's the major driver for its future competitiveness. And you have summary of dates and some expected uh, expected uh, uh, capex projections uh, just confirmation that uh, the all financing program if there is any question uh, mrs bartos will be happy to to answer those questions the financing program is fully arranged support uh, uh, finalized and and organized so there is no any outstanding issues and any and the open uh, open issues in terms of the uh, financing financing of the project as mr president said i'm also happy to take any questions you may have thank you very much thank you and as usually questions and as usually who, who made an effort and are here are the first to, to ask a question i see Piotr. It's preparing for service, yeah. Hello, it's Piotr from Citibank. Um, uh, I have a few questions, really, regarding Opole. I mean, we met for the third time with Fed management to discuss it. We made a two times u term. What is different this time that you assume that makes this sense for you versus Mr. Killian, who sent us a year ago an email saying it doesn't make sense? What is different in the power price assumptions in whatever you make? Or, you know, that's the first question. Second question, what is the levelized cost of energy? I'm quite disappointed with the lack of detail of the presentation in terms of uh, price assumptions uh, and the, how the market will look like in general. What is the levelized cost of energy? What are your power price assumptions for 2020, 25, 30? So we can match it versus each other and see you know, and what is expected a BPA in 2019? I'll stop here for now. Okay. I think I will answer your question. Thank you very much for these questions. And I will answer the first of your question. The second one probably Mr. Marjitz will give you an answer. Um, perhaps uh, I wasn't uh, explicit in my speech enough, so I repeat. I tried to uh, draw your attention to the main factors that uh, let in the food of our conclusion to continue to build this, those, these two units called Apollo 2. The first one, uh, we believe, judging upon the decision uh, made in the other countries and upon the decision made in our countries in terms of the renewable support scheme that uh, there should be uh, uh, more room, more space for the capacity generated from the conventional units in the market. So we believe to be exposed uh, less at the risk of the renewables in terms of the, our place and uh, width of this place within the married order. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, currently discussed modernization or changes of the Polish renewable scheme will lead to the, uh, bring about the same effect. I, I, I understand that the government is to uh, fulfill the obligations, its commitment 
uh, to have uh, so-called 20% of renewables here in Poland. Actually, this is not 20 by 15, but still, this is, let's say, a valid uh, figure. But the question is on what price, on what costs it should be done. So the government says, yes, we are about to rationalizing the support scheme, uh, which means that the dynamic of the uh, res growth, res, I mean renewables growth in Poland, we believe, is not to be in future so high as it was in previous years, which will create more room for our capacity, our capacity coming from the conventional units. This is the first factor. The second one is about the CO2. Okay. Last year, last year, uh, uh, we uh, or some could say, well, there might be still a doubt about the future of the CO2 policy. I mean, CO2 European policy. Today, after a presentation in particular last uh, Wednesday, when the European Commission has presented the so-called Package 2030, we have no doubt that ambitious targets will be kept, will be maintained. Which means that, of course, on a such a market, uh, uh, conventional units should uh, have an easier life, if I may say. So we, this is a, let's say, a driving factor to, to take up the advantages of of being more efficient in terms of usage of coal and the lower emission towards or against the, the old one, the old one units. Of course, we uh, expect to be delivered with the supplier of these two units with, uh, with the generator of having 45.5% uh, of uh, um, efficiency. Uh, and we have to compare it to the existing situation where the the so-called old conventional units, they reach something between 30, 35 percent of the efficiency. So this gap is our advantage, we believe. In other terms, we estimate to spend lower costs in terms of the CO2. And uh, third one, but not last one, I was telling you about the capacity remuneration mechanisms. Of course, in our uh, analysis, we took into consideration that since the beginning of this year, TSO, after the approval of the regulator, has introduced a new type of the balancing service. Actually, this is modernized one because it existed before. I mean operational capacity reserve. That, of course, help to be online for the existing units. In other words, of course, uh, we believe that we believe that me this mechanism will uh, will continue, will be used by the TSO, because we cannot imagine a situation when the TSO resigns from that mechanism, risking not to have in the system enough reserved capacity. This mechanism was uh, designed and implemented in order to deliver to the market the adequate level of the reserved capacity for the purpose of the TSOs in terms of the, let's say, uh, sudden events, unexpected events of the system. So changes on the market in terms of the market model reshaping, we believe will continue because we are not the only country where such uh, changes are taking place or took place. I show you the chart on it. There is even discussion on uh, European level. Maybe it's still a tough one, but the EU staff is open to discuss a new, uh, new market model functioning, where there is a, a lower risk in terms of the cash flow from the point of view of the conventional units. And in a consequence, again, more room uh, within the merit order for such units that are delivering the let's say, such a product with the main name as security of supply. So three main factors. They had been discussed last year, but today we are sure, or pretty sure, or much more sure, that they are or will be delivered in a foreseeable future. This is a background. This is, these are the fundamentals of our decision. Okay? 
And sorry, I forgot your question about you the. You still analyze cost of energy and how you split it into, you know, uh, how you compare it versus your power price assumptions. You know, what's 2020, 2025, 2030? Because if it's a long time project, it's a viable question. And then what's a BDA in 2019 once these blocks are commissioned? I'm just trying to get, you know, I'm looking at this project that you spend 9 billion zloty on my numbers, it generates 600 million EBDA, so you buying it at whatever, 15 times EDA DA business 2019, I think it's not, it doesn't create shareholders value. <clears throat> Sorry, but we are not able to give you a specific numbers uh, from the uh, very very deep numbers from uh, our model, but our calculations based on the assumptions we provided leads us to the conclusions we, uh, we, we presented to you, and we believe that creates positive value for our shareholders. And uh, as you perfectly know, uh, uh, every uh, project can be counted and analyzed differently. So we believe that our calculation is precise, and we believe that our calculation is based on the very hard assumptions, especially related to the merit order, structure of the market, cost of different units, and that leads us to, to, the, to the conclusion we presented. But we are not in the position to present every single detailed uh, assumption from our model. That's in the range between 2000, uh, 250 to 1, uh, two, uh, and 300 slots. 250 to 300? That's in, within this range, that's the LSOE. So is this that you believe the current power price of 150 will move up by 100 slots over what period of time? Over the time of, of the, of the uh, running of this unit. Will this be caused only by merit order? capacity mechanism coming in and filling the gap. You said in your assumption you don't assume any there is a different there. there is a different impact of different assumptions. We have uh, uh, CO2, we have uh, coal prices, uh, uh, coal prices assumptions, we have a uh, uh, operational reserve mechanism which also uh, will have impact on the on the market prices and each of those assumptions will create specific impact or small impact which leads to the uh, general and total conclusion so it's quite difficult to give you specific impact uh, of each detailed assumption because uh, we calculated this in very different scenarios those basic assumptions and the most critical ones we provided quite precisely how we uh, uh, how we uh, assume them in our model and uh, we believe uh, those assumptions are based on the very credible uh, sources and very credible providers, and those the, the major ones, which are the major drivers for the output of the model. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe chance for for our distant viewers has the chance to London. Questions from Fred Barasi of, of Goldman Sachs. Um, first of all, um, do your calculation of IRR for Apollo assume that operational reserve payment? will be received for the whole capacity of the group. Please repeat the question because I don't fully follow. Do, do you assume that operational reserve payment will be paid to the whole remaining capacity of the group? Yeah, but is there? No, we do not assume that. No, we do not assume that. We. Uh, how to say, we see that there is a mechanism offered by the TSO working on the market, having an uh, impact uh, on the whole market. Of course, we will participate, our units and our capacity will participate in that uh, mechanism, uh, partly, but the main effect of this mechanism is to, is to bring about the, um, let's say, increase of the uh, market prices of electricity in particular, in in in, uh, in the peak segment, let's say, this effect is quite visible if you look at the uh, prices of the contracts 
for 2015, 16, and even 17, if I remember well, on Polish Power Exchange. Can you please confirm uh, the lifetime assumption for Apollo units? Yes. It is 40 years. 55. And then the question from Mr. Bartolomeo Karaki. Um, it's over 40 years, over 45 years. If you are concerned about carbon price increase and renewable sources, uh, why don't you invest heavily in renewable sources which will come online without the current um, within the current green certificate system instead of building a coal plant. We are developing our portfolio, in, we are trying to develop our portfolio in uh, quite uh, balanced, uh, balanced basis. We don't want to be exposed to one scenario or, uh, or another. Development of our renewable uh, renewable portfolio will be assessed based on the uh, on the on the new regulation. Uh, so uh, we don't want to be exposed to the one individual and one and uh, and single uh, development uh, market development scenarios. So we believe that we should, uh, to possible extent, keep our portfolio uh, balanced, and, and that's why we are. Uh, considering investments in, in, in different segments. Any, any outside questions? Mm, I'm concerned with uh, your long-term agreement on coal purchases from Compania Venglova. And please answer two questions. If uh, black price uh, total black price uh, remains flat terminally. Mm, will you still be paying uh, an increasing price for uh, coal year after year? I would like to know what's in the agreement. Is it is this 1.5 uh, Kager 1630 signed for, with with your blood, or it just uh, relates to um, the total price received? by APG. And there is another question. Mm, let's assume the black price uh, remains flat and CO2 certificates grow to, I don't know, 100 uh, euro. Mm. That's just an assumption highlighting um, one issue. Uh, the total price uh, would of course be very different to, uh, to black price without CO2. And my question would be, would be then is uh, Compania Venglova beneficiating on CO2 price growth? Advocating that, okay, total price is black plus CO2, and CO2 are extremely high, so we need increase in uh, coal price. It's all about your future potential changing um, coal price. Our assumption in terms of the coal price is not based on the contractual formula. That's the assumption of the market prices, and the contract formula refers to the market prices and balance the risk between supplier and, and us. So it's not hard assumption that the coal price will grow. We just assume that uh, due to this uh, due to this uh, formula uh, agreed uh, in the contract. Uh, the cost of, of coal will be in relation to the to the market prices. So what we projection what, what we are projection uh, projecting is the market prices, and uh, obviously I cannot share with you the specific formulas from the from the market, but uh, from the from the contract. But that's the assumption of the market objective assumption of the market prices of the of the hard coal. Uh, second question, if uh, there is CO2 allowances cost 100 euro, then there is no electricity in Europe, in Germany, in Poland and, yeah. and other countries. So yeah. we are not uh, analyzing such scenario because it's, uh, it means that it puts unlikely. us back to the... To it's, the it's, it's unlikely. 
it's in life. So you still have a bridge. Can you ask about you analyzing 100 euro uh, scenario. Let's say it will be 30 euro, which is in your 35. Uh -huh. uh, and nothing changes but CO2 price. Would uh, Compania Venglova benefit on growth in a CO2 uh, price? Uh, as we informed when we signed contract with Compania Venglova, uh, the formula um, is related to carbon prices, power prices, and coal prices. That's the answer. And as, as it was said, the risks are um, <coughs> fairly evenly fairly better say, distributed amongst two parties. Yes, but actually... That's the answer we can, we can give. This is a rather question to Kampania Venglova, not to us. I think that um, we are not in a position to discover or to disclose any, any you know, provisions of the contract between us. It, it would be uh, at least unfair. But at least. if your contract with Kampania allows for changes in coal prices, for the uh, changes in CO2 exclusively, mm -hmm. that would double uh, risk uh, to PG. That's it. Because CO2, growth in CO2 is not favorable to, uh, to PG, because there are other low pollution factor uh, units. As, as, as we said, sorry, we can't disclose much details on the contract, but as we said, the contract decreases actually risk for, for PGE. And it's, the risk is fairly distributed uh, among partners. But I agree this project is non, not a uh, uh, no risk project. There is a risk. We just believe that this risk is much better balanced than historically. and and uh, But of course, we are not trying to say that this uh, uh, this project, uh, let's say, is a uh, no-risk uh, project which uh, doesn't have some kind of uh, uh, business risk inside. Of course, there is a number of risks and we are just considering them, monitoring them and react to them once they appear. And that's, that's uh, what we intend to do. One more issue. Uh, you mentioned that you are not very much afraid of uh, new renewable powers because it's only up to 20%. Uh, but I heard, I saw a suggestion of uh, EU committee of increasing okay. this uh, to 27. And it looks like, okay, if we agree on 27, in five years we will we'll wake up with 37. Mm -hmm. So the, the trend is pretty clear from the EU. Are you not afraid of, of that trend? Uh, first of all, this is just a proposal, not a, bi not a binding law yet. It's just a proposal from the sending commission, because we will see what the new uh, commission, new commission staff, uh, will tell on this in the future. The first fact. The second one, this is not a binding for the, each particular uh, EU member state, but this, is, this goal is uh, rather declared to be a European goal, average one, one, one can say, and is not binding in terms of the concrete level, I mean figure, nor in terms of the concrete technology that should be applied to achieve that goal. In a given member state, I, we believe that, you know, the, the Let's say the circumstances, individual circumstances of each member uh, state should be uh, respected in, in terms of that discussion. That's why we are fairly uh, uh, stay cool, let's say, in terms of that issue, right? Uh, from EBS. Uh, good morning. I have a question regarding and the forecasted load factor for Opole. From the guided uh, production vol volumes, it seems it's going to be above 75%. Is that correct? It's about 80. Yeah. It's about 80. Yeah. Could you just please comment how this corresponds with other modern units' load factors? Let's say, Bohatov uh, from your fleet. We believe it corresponds. Uh, it corresponds a little bit uh, more, but we believe that this uh, unit, as a highly efficient one, will work in the in the in the base load, basically. Extend, I just, just couldn't 
It corresponds to the. It corresponds. It's a little bit uh, higher than the than the current units, but uh, achievable. Okay, but that's six terawatt hours is the minimum, right? US, yeah. US, and this is seventy-six percent. Yeah, so that's. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you. Techni technically, new unit can operate over eighty-five percent. This what technology allows for. Um, the next question comes from um, Alexander Selesnyev of uh, Bad Capital. Do you expect any asset rights source in fourth quarter due to power prices? Well, since we do prepare our financials according to the um, international financial reporting standards and accounting standards, we are currently running the, impairment, the required impairment reviews. Well, that is, a, that is a regular year and close routine. Uh, we expect to, to publish our financials in the mid-March, um, and nothing, uh, nothing can be still said about that. And on-site on -site questions. Good, but just one. Oh, we are slowly running up to time. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a few, but I'll choose one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I have uh, two, okay? Well, firstly, uh, on the slide, why the numbers on the CapEx do not match either to 9.4 or 11.6? You know, that's uh, why is it not matching? What am I oh. the, the actual CapEx is slightly higher than the contract with contractors because some works have been done on our own, or are being done on our own, like preparation of construction sites and stuff like that. The difference is not substantial. And uh, just question, I mean, I take your point that CO2 can be 35, but what will be the uh, EBTA impact on the rest of the business? Because we can take this argument, and then how much will you lose money on the rest? How much, could, how much system as a total will become cleaner? You know, what is the loss on the financials there? Yeah, of course, uh, of course, the uh, uh, such uh, high level of uh, of CO two allowances emission will have quite uh, quite uh, material impact on the other segments, on the on the other segments. But we are calculating that, and it's manageable. I would say manageable, but of course changes the profitability and the final results of different uh, of different uh, of different segments. But all of them are still we keep them in the in the in the um, base load uh, for the system. But the position in the base load changes. That's that's correct. So what is the sensitivity of PG Group to CO2? One euro higher CO2. What does it mean to your BTA in 2020? I think Pierre, that's a pretty straightforward calculation, and uh, I can't do it. can do it on the uh, right now. So, then, then, then we have a question from from Igor Mo Kuzmin of of Morgan Stanley. What what would be the impact of efficiency improvement program, and do you uh, plan to increase uh, its impact? We do have uh, quite, uh, quite extensive works on, uh, on the efficiency improvement programs in terms of the fixed costs and um, in, in, uh, in our major segments, uh, operational segments. Um, obviously, we do not disclose those information right now. We are working on our strategy review that will, uh, that will be also followed with, uh, with the short-term, mid-term and long-term financials. Uh, that will incorporate the, uh, the efficiency program improvements. All I can um, confirm right now is that the EBTA and financial plans for the Apollo project are pretty safe and conservative in terms of our efficiencies and in terms of the macroeconomic impacts. Can I make one explanation because uh, I misunderstood the question? The uh, the the running time of such block is about 45 45 years as i mentioned in the model we are assuming 35 years 
in the model. We are calculating this in the period of 35 years, but the effective time is longer as, as uh, let's say, uh, practice in, in, in the sector shows that those units are operated in the, in the longer time. That's why I mentioned 45. Model and the results are based on the 35 years calculation. No, just one question. Uh, we, we discussed uh, carbon and, and, uh, and coal. Uh, what about other costs, uh, which could be regarded mostly fixed costs probably, and these costs are supposed to be uh, pretty low per unit because it's a large project, benefits of scale. Could you give any, any hint what are the um, other, all other costs um, per megawatt, for instance? That would be one of the most efficient units uh, in Poland with the lower cost per unit uh, produced due to this economy of scale. Uh, and that would be one of the best, uh, one of the best in Poland, if not the best one. Maybe two questions from you, Robert Maria Charmaine. Uh, could you comment on um, what happens to the project if the main company in the consortium Polymex goes bust. Do you have any alternative uh, <laughs> idea? Because the, the company is still in pretty dire shape at this moment. And the second thing, if you could provide us with a short rundown on other conventional projects, or you are going ahead of this with, uh, we have Kozienica right now, which is launched, now Apollo. Uh, when it's going to stop the new projects in conventional uh, generation? Thanks. Uh, uh, your first question, in close cooperation with the financial institution and, and PKOBP, the structure of the project, the institutional and formal legal structure of the project addressed the risk of the, I would call it, financial standing on the individual subcontractor. So that's the, that's the first point. So from the safety, contractual safety and work continuation point of view, the project is organized on the cell, uh, safe side and that's the uh, solution and that's the structure recommended by the financial institution uh, to, let's say, um, keep the project going in the worst case scenario from the individual uh, subcontractor. The second element is that uh, uh, the Alstom is a is a let's say a backup a backup solution in terms of an 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 individual issues for the subcontractors and it's also contractually addressed that that in the, in the end of the day uh, Alstom would uh, let's say make sure that all uh, works are uh, done according to schedule and uh, as uh, as contractually uh, agreed. Uh, in terms of the of the other conventional project, the main one is uh, is Project Turuf. We are analyzing the uh, offers, and we are in the process of analyzing offers. Uh, so it's quite premature to uh, to give you now the, the the feeling how it looks like and how will uh, we will continue uh, with this. Uh, Kozienice, it's. I, I, I don't I don't remember such power plant in our portfolio so it's not our 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 unit so it's quite difficult to comment but we assume that Kozienice, uh, of course we assume we Kozienice in our uh, let's say uh, projections of the market that Kozienice are operational as scheduled so we, we include the Kozienice in our market uh, uh, modeling. Okay, so maybe um, uh, as we are approaching end of time, we know that other big companies are reporting today, so we don't want to, to, to um, occupy you too much. Uh, we'll finish with last question from Sarah Lighting of J.P. Morgan. I would say that that's kind of ritual question we always receive, so what's what output has already been hatched and what for what average price of our ritual answer would be that sorry we have never disclosed this and will never uh, or in foreseeable future will not disclose this we have received a few other questions we'll answer them via email and if you have any doubt as usually you can call our investor relations team um, so thank you for for coming and see you in the a little more than a month time on annual results announcement.